Hey, hey, party people. I get a ton of questions about what to do to prepare for fashion school. So in this video, I'm going to go over what classes to take and why and what jobs and activities you can do outside of school to best prepare for fashion school. And for those of you who want to learn about the school application process, I already made videos about that. I have a bunch of videos on schools and portfolios and whatnot. So check the links in the description box under the related videos section. Okay. So let's talk about first high school and what classes to take. Regardless of any advice from anyone, you always need to double check your graduation requirements for your high school. Make sure you are taking all your required classes to graduate. If you want to pick up a foreign language, it's probably best to pick one used in the industry a lot. I took Russian in high school because I thought it looked and sounded cool and... Uh, yeah, my Russian friends still call me Zoya. However, looking at my career and looking at the fashion industry in the U.S., I wish I studied Spanish or Chinese. Really? Hmm. The common foreign languages, of course, will be different in every country. But here in the U.S., especially in California, Spanish and Chinese are extremely common in the garment industry. So science courses, I took biology, chemistry, and physics as my requirements. Do you use them directly in fashion? Not really. Do you need them to pass high school so you can go to college? Very much yes. Is it cool to study things outside of art and fashion to make you a more well-rounded designer that you can find inspiration everywhere? Yes, indeed. At my high school, we had a science course called Human Anatomy and Physiology, and I still reference that course in my figure drawing. Actually, I took a weight training class as one of my uh, PE, physical education options, and I learned a ton about muscle groups in that class too. People ask me often if they need math. If you wanna be a fashion designer or a pattern maker, yes, you need to learn math. You don't need to learn crazy higher maths like calculus you know, I will never deal with another logarithm ever again in my life, and that makes me happy. But random thing about me, I like super love math jokes. <laughs> anyway, basic arithmetic and geometry is used a ton in pattern making and general garment construction. Most people who make clothes, they don't even think about it anymore. But, you know, I want this section of this bikini ruched to a 3 to 1 ratio, and this space is 2 and 7 eighths inch across. Just that kind of stuff all the time. And, you know, add a dash of trigonometry. Pattern making is basically geometry and fabric. If you use the imperial system, you know, inches, feet, yards, you really do need to get good with fractions. And uh, you're going to be working with fractions a ton. 15 sixteenths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch, all the time. People who use the metric system deal more with decimals. Additionally, if you want to eventually start your own business, you're going to be staring at a lot of cost sheets and purchase orders. So yeah, like, no, you don't need to know what irrational numbers are, but basic arithmetic, you need to get good at that. I am an old lady, and when I was in high school, we took basic typing classes. That was the only computer class available, and I grew up playing Oregon Trail. Okay. I know more cl computer classes are available now. Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Microsoft Word, and Excel. Those are the four most common programs designers use. So if you have the option, take those classes. You will absolutely need to learn Adobe Illustrator to do flats as a designer. So if you can, learn early. Yes, I have some videos on that too. They're on the on the computer playlist. History and social sciences are also required courses in both high school and your average American art school. 
As a big costume and fashion history geek, I love making the connections between world events and how costume has changed, responding to different wars, you know, how the discovery of Pompeii inspired new silhouettes in fashion, how women's clothes changed during World War II, when exactly men's clothes got so boring. And yeah, your history classes may not cover them specifically, but you'll basically read about the events and see art of the era. And you can see how these costumes uh, change over the, year, over the decades and make the connections. Most art schools require you to take art history courses. Lots of fashion schools offer costume history courses. Some even uh, require you to pass costume history classes in order to graduate. So having a basic history foundation will help you build your art and costume knowledge on top of that. So on to art classes, or as in college, they say they call them studio classes, like at your standard art school that offers a bachelor's of fine arts, they will call English and history, your liberal arts courses, and your drawing and sewing courses, your studio courses. So in high school, you know, if you have fashion related courses available to you in high school, that is awesome. But most of us do not have that luxury. So let's talk about our classes that are more common in your everyday average secondary school. Drawing and painting classes, of course, even classes that have nothing to do with figures or fabric will help you see, help you analyze what you're seeing, understand proportions, understand how to make something look 3D by using light and shadow, learn how to control your line, experiment with different media. Many people ask me what media they should practice in in preparation for fashion school. Mm. Markers and watercolor and gouache. Gouache is a type of watercolor. You will do quick design sketches in marker and final finished illustrations, sometimes in marker, generally in watercolor and or gouache. I have nothing against color pencil. It looks super nice, but designers don't use them because they're slow. Working with color pencils is slow. We use color pencils 95% of the time to add texture and details to marker and watercolor renderings. I deliberately did this illustration using different media and sped up the illustrations at exactly the same rates because I want to show you how fast marker is, how slow color pencil is, and watercolor is kind of in between. It can be fast if you learn how to work with it. Watercolor pencil is great for specific textures like chunky knits, and I love playing with them in general, but it's not the most important or most necessary medium to learn for designers. Keep in mind, if your goal is to be an illustrator and not a designer, go ahead and play with whatever medium you like. Art classes involving 3D art and design like pottery and jewelry uh, make you know, they help you see things on the round, design objects, considering all angles. And I've said this many times, but clothing is more like sculpture than anything else. We view it at all angles. We analyze it at all angles. Sewing. I know a ton of people who didn't sew before fashion school, who still did really well, myself included, earned A's in class. So don't worry too much about that. Like, Literally, I cried during my very first sewing class in fashion school because I broke the machine. I <laughs> and I still earn an A after getting my button gear in that class. Here's the thing about sewing and a lot of garment production, garment construction processes. A lot of my pattern making and sewing teachers used to say that they preferred students who didn't have a lot of home sewing and home pattern experience before school because home sewers have very specific habits and teachers would have to break them out of those habits so that they could learn industrial sewing methods. If you really wanna get a jump start, my number one recommendation is to learn to get comfortable in front of an industrial sewing machine. You can buy a used one for a few hundred bucks they last forever, and it's really nice to have your own machine while going to school. Even sewing two pieces of muslin together over and over again for a week while you learn to control the speed will help you. 
Literally, my first sewing homework assignment in fashion school was to sew a million muslin squares, two layers together at a half inch seam allowance, like a million of these squares. It was an exercise in controlling your machine. Next, buy some yardage of different fabrics, and they can be totally cheap. Go get some stuff at the bargain sale bin at your local store, you know, cheap polyester satin instead of silk, etc., etc., and practice sewing neat, tidy seams in all kinds of slippery fabrics, thick fabrics, stretchy, wonky fabrics. Get some stripe fabric and practice matching stripes. Practice sewing seams on the bias. Learn machine control, and you will be ahead of the game for any number of projects in school. You can watch my How to Sew A Comma Seams video and practice different seams. You can watch how my How to Sew Zippers video. These two videos I made with Mariah, and she is a sewing whiz. And so you can copy those, but that's my number one advice. If you can only get a home machine, go ahead and practice those techniques and practice sewing different fabrics, but that's really second best. So Zoe, what do I do if my high school doesn't have that many art classes? Or any. <laughs> One, get a private tutor. Who to hire? Unfortunately, hmm, the reality is public school teachers don't make that much money and many private tutor on the side to make ends meet. So you can ask teachers at your school district, neighboring school districts, if they know of anyone. You can see if your local college has a job board where university students are looking for tutoring work, that sort of thing. Number two, you can take classes at a local university or junior college. I did this my senior year of high school. Number three, take classes at your local community art center. Okay, there's a lot of these uh, art centers where you can take a two-month pottery class for 30 bucks or something like that. Of course, don't quote me on those prices. That may just be my age showing. <laughs> Number four, check with your school if you can take and pass the same art class twice and get the credits twice. I took the same drawing class twice and the same jewelry making class twice. And I got the credits for all of them. You know, I passed all four of them and got the credits for all four of them to graduate. And I learned a ton with reinforced lessons and practice time with the school's equipment and all that stuff. My soldering skills used to be on point. Probably don't know how to do anything anymore, though. <laughs> Number five, check with your school if you can create an independent study course. My last semester of high school, I ran out of arts classes to take. I was already taking a color theory class and an oil painting class at the local university, and I had the internship, but I still had one elective credit that I needed to fulfill at my high school to graduate. So my art teacher and I created an independent study art class for me. And number six, watch my videos and practice on your own. Now let's talk about working before fashion school. Some of us need to save up for school and also having any job on your resume where you stayed employed for a big chunk of time looks really good when you're just getting started building your resume. Like recruiters will see, okay, we are looking for entry level. This person just got out of school, but look, they were working at a Starbucks for three years. So they know how to hold down a job. They know how to show up and be there and work hard, you know? So that, that looks good regardless of, you know, what you're doing. Working retail helps everyone in any fashion career. Working with customers, observing what gets attention, what sells, what doesn't. Ask customers why they decided they didn't want something. All these things will help you as a designer. And I'm always telling students, when you're doing retail research, go check out the sales section. See what is not selling. Okay? There's a lot to be learned there. Another good option for a part-time job is working at an alteration shop. Okay, they use industrial sewing machines, and there is so much to learn about fitting and fixing. And I know a lot of my former students love working at the local fabric store because they also got an employee discount on fabric. If you can score an industry internship, of course, that would be awesome. If you watch my interview with costume designer Shirley Zakovich, then you know costume shops are always looking for help. So go hunt down some gigs, work wardrobe at shows, stuff like that. And maybe that costume shop is at your high school. 
Okay, and that can be a nice extracurricular that you list in your college applications. My first internship was working in the costume design department of my hometown opera house my senior year of high school, and it was great, and I learned a ton. All right, some miscellaneous last notes. One, if you are studying in a city new to you, you're going to move, or you're applying to schools in different cities, research the city. Research the cost of living. The fashion capitals tend to be expensive cities to live in. Look up things like how reliable public transportation is, whether having a car is practical, whether your school has dorm housing or you have to figure that out yourself, whether you'll need a job. Maybe you need to move a little early to start looking for a job before school starts. If you work for a chain, maybe you can request a transfer. You don't need to go to fashion school right after high school. Art schools tend to have a higher percentage of older students than your average university. College is expensive. I know lots of people need to work for a few years to save up for school. And some parents, they don't want to help their kids go to art school. Like they would only be willing to pay for a quote unquote normal, regular liberal arts education. You know, I've heard that story a ton too. And that sucks, but it's fine because, you know, even when I was teaching at university, I had, I had students older than me. You know, and some of them, this was their second career, their third career. So don't feel too bad if you have to wait before you can go to fashion school. So the question is, what can you do during this time while you're waiting and saving and all that good stuff? You can talk to the schools you want to attend and ask them what classes you can take at a junior college or a community college that will transfer. I know lots of people in the U.S. will take lower division liberal arts classes like freshman level English at a junior college and transfer those credits. It's often cheaper. Some people like to finish their as many liberal arts credits as possible to focus on their studio classes when they get to fashion school. You can take art classes so you can work on improving your portfolio. And there you have it. My tips on how to prepare for fashion school. Do you need to do all these things in order to succeed in fashion school? No, but it will definitely help. You'll start school with a bit more peace of mind. The learning curve won't be as steep. Channel old timers know what I will always say. We are not made of magic. We are made of practice. Dedication to craft and work ethic count far more than any preconceived subjective notion of talent. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Check the description box for links to related videos and links to my shenanigans, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.